So guys, it's uh, all been happening in the last week or so for Planetside 2. Rel hosted the first dev stream for the year showing off the brand new continent that's coming to the game. And the game as of today actually celebrates its ninth birthday, which is kind of ridiculous to think about when you really put it that way. But here we are and it's time to discuss. G'day there once again viewers, this is your mate Kamikaze78 here and today we're going to be going over both the nine year anniversary update for Planetside 2 and the Assured dev stream. Now, we have a lot to get through here today, but there are a couple of things I want to touch on first. Firstly, big thanks to everyone for the love on the latest LMG tier list video we did. I wasn't really expecting the reception that that video got, but I'm pleasantly surprised to say the least. It was without a doubt the biggest creative endeavor I've ever taken on this channel as of late, at least in recent memory. I mean, even more so than the implant tier list we did last year. This time around, just for some transparency, I had to collect a screenshot of every weapon we covered and trace around it to isolate it from the background. I had to collect recoil patterns for each weapon and then create a stat sheet that was handmade in photo shop for each weapon as well, which resulted in around about 29 overlays, followed by another six overlays for the tier overviews. So yeah, to hear the overwhelming support on that video in the comments was humbling. Thank you again, guys. Due to popular demand, we are going to be doing another one of those videos very shortly. In fact, we are going to be doing a stream soon where we tier list the next weapon category. But I'm going to leave you guys guessing as to what that weapon category is going to be, and we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Also, on another note, guys, we're going to be doing a giveaway for the nine-year anniversary Fleet Admiral Bundle valued at 7,999 Daybreak Coin in this video, thanks to RPG and as a thanks to you guys for the support. Want to know how to win the code? Stick around through the video and you'll find out more. But anyway, let's now talk about the dev stream. And first things first, can we just take a moment to appreciate the effort Rel put into pretty much single-handedly running that stream from his home office? Mithril was of course in the background helping with giveaways and moderation, and we had some special guests in the form of Homero Sanchez and Chris Bishop coming on to talk about their work, which again was very nice to hear, but Rel had to deal with a couple of front-facing technical issues during the stream. And as somebody who streams regularly, I know how annoying and frustrating it can be to deal with those issues with people watching you live. So a huge shout out goes out to Rel for getting the stream out there. It was scuffed at times, I think we can all admit that, but trust me, we really do appreciate the effort as a community. More so because, well, we've got some pretty interesting details to go over today as a result of that stream. First things first, it has been confirmed that Oshaw is an archipelago and the play space is the same size as Indar, which means that this continent is made up of not one landmass, but a bunch of smaller islands across the board. So the ability to traverse water is going to be something that we're going to be getting pretty acquainted with over time here, and we'll get to that soon, don't worry. One thing Rel made a pretty clear point about is the variation of height on the continent. Thanks to the nature of the continent being just a collection of islands, going from sea level to cliff faces to sloping beach fronts to dense jungles, there's going to be a variety of terrains and environments that will see action on this continent. Some of the islands themselves are even going to act as forms of cover or breaks in line of sight for vehicles traversing water against certain angles, so we're going to see some pretty varied gameplay here as well when it comes to offense and defense. Another pretty unique element of this continent that Rel confirmed during the stream as well was that Oshaw is not going to have any warp gates, and if you've played any of the new campaigns so far on the live server, it kind of makes sense from a story perspective as well. So the initial plan of having Bastion Fleet carriers as staging points for the factions appears to be the plan to this day, and I remember at one point there was an idea of having the carriers roaming around the edge of the map that was potentially on the cards. No confirmation on that yet in this stream, but part of me wonders if we're going to be able to siege these staging fleet carriers at some point. We'll soon see, I guess. Now, in addition to the general environment, we also got a bit more information in regards to the battle flow. We already know that this continent is going to be pretty heavily focused on construction and logistics, and there's going to be some large open spaces that we kind of saw in the stream that confirmed that. We also heard key mention of there being beach fronts that you could fortify with construction equipment, and the maps seem to really cultivate that happening, so Normandy D-Day in Planet Side 2 is, well, going to happen. There's also plans to include a bunch of brand new shielded Sundera garages around the map to facilitate stronger spawn solutions on this more logistics based continent. And on top of that, those garages will have complementary buildings containing generators that will power said shields. So yeah, it's safe to say that spawn options are going to be pretty difficult to dislodge on this continent, which to me is great. We're going to see longer fights that are more drawn out, and I do quite enjoy that style of the game. But in addition to that, Rel was also nice enough to give us a first look at some of the new facilities that are 
are coming to the game with Oshur, one of which being the Interlink Array. And yeah, to clarify, there is some inspiration being taken here from the Interlink facilities that were teased way back when in the Hosen reveals back in the day. These are going to be on a smaller scale by comparison to the original Interlink facility plans, but they sort of look to appear to be a nice and tight-knit infantry environment amongst what is seemingly a heavily combined arms environment. In addition to that, Planetside's version of the Seattle Space Needle was also spied in the teaser screenshots, and Rel also confirmed that these will be coming to the continent as long as there's no dramas with their integration to the game beforehand. He did state that if they don't play out how the devs want them to, then they will remove them and potentially reevaluate adding them in at a later date. The plan here is for there to be no means to get up to them without transportation. No teleporters, no jump pads, nada. You need to transport to get up there. So routers might be pretty key here. Now, in addition to that, and I am sorry for doing this to Yorel, but an additional water-based facility was leaked by the man himself on accident. Now, Looking at it a bit closer, it just looks like a biolab on a water, which is exciting to me because, not because it's a biolab, because you guys know me, biolabs aren't my favourite bases in the game, but it does tell me that the developers are considering water-based facilities, and to see additional water-based facilities like oil rigs and stuff would make for some awesome gameplay in my opinion. All it says here is the devs are experimenting with that concept, and that makes me very happy. Now, we also got a couple of tidbits of information regarding the water traversal mechanics, but it's all pretty self-explanatory, so I don't want to spend too long going over this stuff. Basically, we saw a harasser and a sunderer puttering along the surface of the water as we expected to do so. It was kind of fun to see vehicles floating on the water and actually, you know, floating. It was just sort of like a nice little novelty. You know, I enjoyed it in a, in a, in a really weird way. Anyway, we also saw a lightning and a foot soldier traversing the ocean floor and even a reaver took a dive underwater for a wash. Across the board, all of this water traversal stuff did look pretty sluggish, and there's a chance this is still being tweaked, but it does look like it'll be mainly used as an alternative mode of transport based on how fast it is currently. But we'll see, close to the date, how it actually ends up operating. One thing they spent a bit of time talking about was the audio of the water environments and how they plan to really take the time to sell the underwater environment from an audio perspective. Oh, and we also saw a mag rider float. That was fun. It has been confirmed that all projectiles that enter the water will behave as they would in real life, with a significant amount of drag being applied to them. So yeah, good luck on shooting into the water to get a kill. It's gonna be a little bit tough. But that's sort of all we know so far, gang, and it has to be said, this all looks pretty bloody exciting. And to top it all off, at the time of writing this video, Oshur comes out in 17 days. I know, right? That's that's pretty close. So clearly, we have a lot to look forward to here, and Planetside is about to get a really big suite of fresh content for us to enjoy. We've been playing on the same continents for a long-ass time now, and to get a fresh environment to finally sink our teeth into, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what kind of gameplay it has to offer. Which brings us to our giveaway. If you guys want a chance at winning that Fleet Admiral code, then all you need to do is like the video and leave a comment in the comment section down below as to what you guys are most looking forward to when it comes to Oshore and what it aims to bring to the table. Include your Discord ID in the comments so I can message you if you end up winning and I'll pick the winner two days out from the video release. So keep an eye on your Discord inboxes around then, gang. But beyond that, the ninth year anniversary update dropped for Planetside 2 this week, and we've got a couple of little things that are worth quickly mentioning before calling it a day here. Firstly, the second campaign is now live, and I've started playing it over the last couple of days, getting my teeth sunk right in. Gotta say, right off the bat, the campaign does feel a little less tedious and a bit more well-baked into the core gameplay loop this time around. I know that sounds strange, but I think we can all say that there were moments in the last campaign where it felt almost frustrating to enjoy at times, but this time around, I can't really say I'm having the same problems. I've sort of been enjoying it from start to finish at this stage. So the devs have clearly been taking notes and feedback on board and it shows. Let's hope this carries over to the second chapter when we land a sure side. There's also some new campaign specific items to unlock that apparently have some interesting effects that a lot of the community have been bringing up. I plan to talk about that soon as well. We've also had things like ASP 2.0 launch. Yes, my friends, you heard me right. If you're an ASP 100 character and you're looking for that sense of belonging once again, you're looking for that sense of accomplishment that comes from grinding out numbers on your character's battle rank, well, you can finally get yourself going through that grind once again. Why? Well, because you hate yourself for one, but also you can unlock more ASP perks and more abilities, which will be great for the Time to Gear Up series, it has to be said. Coltier has also been removed with the intent of sort of dialing in how it plays and what its role is for the game currently. Some balancing changes will also made to the Arbalest and the MGR C1 Charger, which I also plan on covering soon in more detail. Oh, and 
Engineer mains rejoice. You guys now have a zoom optic on your anti-vehicle mana turret. Crab Raven chat. But guys, with all of that said, that is going to be wrapping up today's video discussing the Osure dev stream, as well as the ninth anniversary update that dropped a few days ago. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it, a dislike if not, and if you are new to the channel and you consider yourself enjoying yourself here for the long run, consider subscribing. It goes a long way to, you know, making sure you stay up to date with whenever we go live and do other videos like that. All my social media links, guys, can also be found in the description down below, including my Twitter, TikTok, and my Discord server. Would be great to see you guys hanging out there as well. Once again, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Peace out, and I will see you guys all in the next one. Take care, guys. Have a good one.